Hello everyone, welcome to Naomi's Bookshelf. Welcome to my TBR for June. These are the books I'm prioritizing or trying to read. I don't have to read them, but I'm definitely going to aim for it. This is the actual legitimate stack that I want to pull from for the, because if it like reading challenges or book clubs, um, different kinds of things or read alongs. Actually, there's another book that I forgot to add to that pile, but we'll not be finishing it. it is Tale of the Genji or The Tale of Genji. Um, so I'll be adding this one to my pile as well. There we go. That's a lot more accurate. So uh, for in regards to last month's reading, I did really well. I finished everything that I set my eyes on or that I wanted to really. I changed some things out, but I did a lot of reading. So because of that, I'm feeling confident going into June. It is a month where uh, it's my birthday month, so I'm going to be doing some book shopping. and I hope I don't spend too much. I will be also spending some time with family because there's a lot of key birthdays happening this year in June with my family and we're just gonna have a good time we're doing a read-along of the tale of Genji so that will be live shows on my channel uh, every other Saturday I'll link my announcement video so you can check out all the details but basically it's gonna be kind of filled and I hopeful hopefully fun. So let's pick prompts and I'll try to fit these books in wherever I can um, and we'll see what I can do. I'm not going to shuffle, I'm just going to pull randomly and we'll see. The first one is The Conservatory. I get this card every single month. I am going to skip it this month and I'm going to pull a new one because quite honestly I have books that could fit but I'm sick and tired of this card. Not in the pile anymore. We'll pull this one instead. The Wrench. Let's think about The Wrench. So for The Wrench, I had to think about it for a little bit. Uh, I'm not going with anything on this pile. These are all still going to be attempted to put on the TBR. But for The Wrench, I'm going to put on The Canterbury Tales by Geoffrey Chaucer, which is retold by Peter Ackroyd. I have owned this one for a while. I read or at least listened to the um, Canterbury Tales like there were like select stories in the edition that I was li listening to. Um, so I wanted to find this or read this since I bought it. And it throws a wrench into my reading plans because I didn't plan on picking this up. But it is a retelling. And for my book club this month, we need to read a retelling about like ancient myths or whatever. But we've kind of expanded it to just retellings. So I'll try this one and see if I can read this book. It's been on my shelf for at least three years so I should pick it up eventually. It's not too big but I'm hopeful that it will keep me engaged. I did enjoy the Canterbury Tales before um, but I had it on audio so I could just push through certain aspects because it is a very old piece of work. So we'll see how I feel with this one and that one will be for the wrench. So I'll just slide that in there and then um, to be fair to everyone else we're gonna put the conservatory back in and if I pull it, I pull it and I'll do it. But man, it is like never ending. I always pull the conservatory. Probably just was punishing me for not going with the conservatory. Let's pick the next one. Dr. Orchid. This is the perfect one to pick. I will be picking The Daughter of Dr. Murnau by um, Sylvia Moreno Garcia. This one is a retelling of The Island of Dr. Murnau by H.G. Wells. But for my book club in July, we might be reading, if a book club doesn't come in, um, we have a kit that we're waiting on. But if it doesn't, we'll read Canadian authors. And Sylvia Moreno Garcia is Canadian. Uh, she's also Mexican and she lives in Vancouver. So the perfect time to put it on. I've owned this one for a year and a half. So it will work for Dr. Orchid because it's a doctor and also tons of greenery on the cover. The next prompt will be the dagger. Oh, I have one for this. Thank goodness I do. For the dagger, I'm gonna be reading The Red Pyramid. I'm gonna try to. I'm not finding myself extremely interested in this. So this is my original pick for mythology retellings for my book club. So I'm gonna really try. This is by Rick Riordan and it's the first in the uh, Kane series or Kane Chronicles. I am interested. I just feel like right now I'm not. So we'll see if I get to it or not. Um, but there is on the cover a scythe sword thing. So 
we're going with that for the dagger and hopefully I can get interested and invested quickly. It's also really big, so that's part of my apprehension. The next book that we're gonna pull is hopefully a bit easier for me to prioritize because I already got two on there that I'm not super keen on right now. Colonel Mustard. I also pull him every month. Every month. I'm gonna put him back in and do what I did with the conservatory. I want new prompts. I want new characters. Like where's, where's a, uh, not Mrs. White. Where's Miss Scarlet, whoever else? I don't know. The Candlestick. I have not had this one in a while. And I got the perfect book. The book I'll be choosing for the Candlestick is Smoke and Ashes. Candlesticks use fire to work and then they blow out and there's smoke. This is the third book in the, oh, I don't even want to know what the name of the title or the series is called. Um, but this is about Sam who is in India. He is a detective in like 1920s. So this book set, takes place in 1921. Um, and because he's a white man in India, there's a lot of racial discussion. There's a lot of civil unrest going on at the time and you get to see it through his eyes along with his partner Surrender Not, who is Indian. So there's this parallel of relationship and I think it's really interesting. I don't know much about this one. I don't really want to know much when I go into this series. I enjoy every single one. I find it's educational, like teaching me about the time, but it's also not too heavy. It, that it's a good plot and a good pace. I'm reading this with Berna and Nikki. I will link their channels in my description box so you can check them out. Um, but we'll be reading this one in June and I'm very excited to pick it up again and continue this series with them. Next one on our list will be The Lounge. I feel like I get this one all the time too. Um, for The Lounge, we're gonna go with The Negotiator. I think we're gonna do that. Uh, this is a very fast paced series. It is quick and engaging. And it's a reread for me. I can just fly through it like that. This is a six book series based on a family of orphans where um, when they were in an orphanage, they adopted each other, chose the last name O'Malley, and they became the O'Malley siblings. Um, this one's about Kate. This is the first book in the series and she's a hostage negotiator with the FBI. So it's just really fun. The series by Dee Henderson, in case I forgot to mention that. Um, and it's a Christian fiction, suspense, like romance. It's it's just so good. Um, and it's really high action. And like, it just it's just so wonderful and quick and easy to read. So it's definitely a lounge worthy book. Poll number six is, <laughs> he has to show up at any and all times, he has to show up. Guess we're doing Colonel Mustard. Oh my goodness. I don't know why he's so insistent on being present. He must be clearly guilty if he's this innocent. Um, what should I pick? That is my question. We're gonna go with the historical fiction. So um, for this Colonel Mustard, I'm gonna go with Pontius, or sorry, Pilot's Wife by Antoinette May. I just recently picked this up from the bookstore. Um, it's about Pilate during the time of Jesus being executed. It looks like this is a Christian fiction or biblical fiction, like set in that time, but I'm not sure if it's Christian or not. I know it's historical, set about that period in the palace where Pilate has to make these tough decisions. Um, and Pilate's wife, she has dreams about the situations. So. I'm excited to pick this one up actually so soon after purchasing it. And I'm tying it to Colonel Mustard because Pilate's in charge of the Roman army there and Colonel Mustard was in the army. That's how we're gonna tie it. I am just surprised that Colonel Mustard and the conservatory keep showing up. Next one, number seven, the dining room. And I'm so glad I saved my other book. This is such a good one for the dining room. I was wondering if it was going to come up. It's 13 at dinner. This is by Agatha Christie. This one's also known as Lord Edgware Dies. So this one is about Lord Edgware who dies mysteriously, but the best suspect is his wife, but she is busy at a dinner all night. So it doesn't make sense. 
Poirot investigates and he has to figure out the mystery. Um, I gave it five stars last time I read it, which was the first time. So I'll be excited to reread this and see if it still is a five star. Um, this one I know is going to be used for the Christie, Three Christie 2024 challenge, which is to um, read a book from the 30s. So I'll be picking up this one and hopefully it is just as good as last time I read it because it was phenomenal then. Pull number eight, and we've still got to get Dance of the Seagull on, and then all the books are fit. Okay, let's see. Mrs. Peacock, that is just too perfect. Too perfect, because it's the Dance of the Seagull, and that's a bird. So this is the Dance of the Seagull. I don't know much about it. I know it's like in a seaside resort or something, or while on vacation, or before vacation. I'm not really sure, but I know it fits because it's a bird. Mrs. Peacock is a bird. Um, and the title got me. I was in the thrift store and I saw this on the mystery shelf and I was like, what do you mean? The Dance of the Seagull. Like that's too interesting of a title. So I had to grab it and I have not read it in the few years I've had owned it. So now's the time. Um, this will be for the book covered book club challenge, which is to read a book with house a house looking over the water on the cover and I'm gonna call those houses. And then for, oh, what was the other one? The buzzwordathon. I think it's the buzzwordathon because the word the is twice and it's a repeating words. So the appears two times. So um, that will be my double pick. And I am very excited to read a book called The Dance of the Seagull. It's just gonna be so interesting, I can tell. And if it lets me down, I'm going to be very, very sad. Just saying. All right. Next and last prompt is Miss Scarlet. Okay. I need to think. The next book will be Daughter of Rome by Tessa Afshar. She has red hair. Going with that. Um, this is a reread for me and I want to read it again. I really loved this book. This book takes place in Bible times with Priscilla and Aquila who are mentioned in the book of Acts um, as a married couple. And this is about her story as a Roman citizen and Aquila who is not Roman. So um, it's just interesting. I love this perspective and I'm excited to pick it up again. So I'm aware there's no nonfiction on this stack. Uh, so we'll see what I pick up throughout the month. I will try to find whatever's interesting to me at the time. I will also be reading in the month of June, the first two sections of Tale of Genji. So it's this much. Um, so that's how many pages will I be reading? About 560 pages and we'll discuss it on live shows. And, um, I'm excited to pick this up. It should be very... Interesting, I've not read ancient Japanese poet or not poetry, but ja ancient Japanese literature before. I've read Japanese literature, ancient literature, but not ancient Japanese. So it should be wonderful to read and pick up. And that's about it for what my reading plans are for Cemented at least. Um, I am going to try for nonfiction, like I said, but aside from that, we'll see how the month goes. We will we'll take it as we, it comes and ride the waves. Please let me know in the comments what you're reading for the month of June. If you're prioritizing anything, if you're reading Tale of Genji with us, I'd love to know. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye for now. In a house that I don't know.